everyone. I'm glad to see you here. And uh, I think that we are going to start our demo lesson. Let's just wait for some more people to join us. I see that now the people are joining. So again, hello and welcome. Well, so today we, are, uh, we have a great topic that uh, I hope will help you to prepare for your final exams. And we are going to look at writing. And uh, I believe that after this lesson, you are going to have some more ideas, some more structure, how to write an article. Uh, at your exam and maybe for your life as well. Great. So let's have some organ organizational moments and then we're going to start. My name is Diana Galavan. I am an LT consultant for National Geographic Learning in Ukraine. And uh, I've been teaching for more than 10 years. Uh, and uh, I've, I had this experience of exam preparation. I know it's hard, but also I know that it could be fun as well. Now, let's, uh, what do you need for the lesson? Uh, first of all, be ready to have your phone with you because some of the activities are going to be on the phone. So I hope that you will we will get this um, interactive lesson and um, you will be able to interact with me not only in chat but with different applications we'll see so make sure that your phone is here i also be joining you uh, so make sure that everything is fine or uh, if you have a laptop you also can do it in the new tab uh, in other option why not now this is uh, what you see on your screen right this question mark is uh, how you can communicate with me if you press it uh, you will get this box where you can write me any message any question and i will be able to see it and uh, respond not maybe not immediately but when i have time so I hope that we will, you will use it. Let's uh, try. Uh, write to me, please. Are you a teacher or a student? And also, where are you from? All right. So now I see that we have some teachers. We have a student. Great. Welcome. And as uh, usual, our geography is wide. We have people from Zaporizhia, from Kyiv, from Moldova. And I hope that now I will see much more places. Sume, great. Sume, bravare. Excellent. Even Iraq. That's interesting. So our lessons are becoming international. I guess that you also have exam preparation in, the, in your country and you will find this, uh, this lesson useful for you. Vinitsa, Erson region, Berislav, nice. Thank you. Thank you for all your response. Dnipro, great. Welcome. It's interesting to know how many students and teachers we have today. Because each lesson, the number is really different. Sometimes we have like 50-50, sometimes more teachers. 
but I hope I think that uh, this lesson could be useful if you are preparing for your test. Student from Winnetsa, nice to meet you, everyone. All right, thank you. So I'm going to uh, look at this chat box a bit later again. And now I think that is a uh, high time to start. Novovolinsk, great. Welcome everyone. So let's start from imagining a city of the future. Can you imagine this city maybe in 100 years or in 50 years? What a city uh, will be look like? And also, uh, what are challenges? What challenges could people face in the future? We don't know, but we can imagine, we can think about it and make our assumptions. So, to collect your ideas, I would like to ask you now to uh, be ready with your phones. You need to go to just one second. You need to go to this site. If you have already visited my lessons, I guess you know it. This is a great site to collect ideas from many people in one place. So what do you need to do? You need to open your browser and go to this site, menti.com, and there you write, uh, you type in the code. So one more time, I'm going to highlight you this address so you could see it. You need to go to the site menti.com and enter this code. The, the site will ask you to do that. I'm going to do the same. So I'm opening my browser and I'm typing this address menti.com. So once I am there, Once I'm there, I will, I'm asked to enter the code and the code now you can see in the screen. Well, we have the first answer. Thank you very much. No rivers, lots of robots, no trees. Doesn't look like bright future, but probably we will find out the way how to live with these challenges. So any ideas, what could it be? Maybe without the environment, with the environment, uh, maybe with the people, maybe with technology. But if we're talking about challenges, this is something that could, should be difficult for people in the future. A lot of animals died, too much gadgets, no trees, social problems, that's right. Okay. So we, we see that more and more people are joining us. So don't be afraid, nobody knows who is writing. And this is totally anonymous. So you can uh, just open this site and type your ideas. You will need them in order to complete our next tasks. If uh, you also can repeat other people's thoughts, if you agree with them, why not? The more people type the same word, the bigger it is. So we could see our bigger, um, our most popular answers, like social problems here air pollution, nuclear disaster. Mm -hmm. 
No fish in the river, traffic jams, that's true. All right, thank you very much. You have been really active. Various viruses, that's true. Road congestions. Too much plastic. So uh, as, as far as I can see here, when we think about challenges uh, of a city of the future, um, the, there are like three main categories, right? Environment, um, traffic, and uh, communication between people, like social problems, gadgets, Mm -hmm. All right, more and more people are joining us and you can see that uh, like every minute our word cloud is changing. So let's wait for, for a minute and we will move on. And also I would like to take the screen of this and to put it in my presentation for us to remember. Great. All right. Thank you very much. So I think that I'm going to like now we have this picture of our future. And let's hope that we will find a way how to deal with these challenges. So I'm going just to screen our answers to for us to remember and uh, put it in my okay some more some more answers right lack of parks smart mobility it's interesting and what about the challenge uh, maybe we will need to study how to live with it right all right, more and more people are joining us. I'm happy that you are so active. So we are going to come back to this presentation a bit later and now we need to do some more tasks. So again, I'm going to screen now this very picture and uh, to put it, to put it into my slide, I'm going to create a new slide and to put this picture here just for us to remember all right so for for now uh, if you st are still there you can also of course you can add your ideas but i am going to to change the slide a bit later so we're going to look at uh, the <clears throat> at the exam task so here is the task as it is read the task and answer the questions how many parts are there in the article? What are they? What parts? How are they different? And uh, once you understand the task, can you uh, think of a, num of a name uh, of the article? So it's very important before you start any writing task to read it carefully and to understand what you need to write about. Uh, this is uh, you need to spend uh, several minutes in order to understand, uh, maybe to read it several times if it is uh, quite difficult, and to understand uh, what you need to write. Because uh, answering the question that is in the, in the task is uh, the big part of your success. Now, uh, please read uh, the task answer the questions and write the answers to me in our chat box. It's very interesting uh, for me to see if you are okay with understanding the, ta uh, the task or maybe we need some more clear explanations. So the first question is how many parts are there in the article? Right, I see that people are answering three parts. Interesting, what are they? 
let's um, let's lo uh, look at the task again. What will be the biggest challenge for cities in the future? Will we be able to deal with it? We will publish the most interesting articles next month. I can see here two questions, right? What will be the biggest challenge for cities in the future? And will we be able to deal with it? So in our article, we need to answer these two questions, right? All right. I also see some more comments about the structure of the article. We are going to look at it, of course, a bit later. But uh, if to forget about uh, the, the structure of the article, what should be in the main part? Yeah. Don't forget that we need two parts, and it's better to separate them in different paragraphs, of course. Good, I see your answers, two parts. The biggest challenge for the cities in the future, this is what we have just collected, the idea that we have just collected, and uh, our predictions, will we be able to deal with it? By the way, I asked you to write three challenges. How many challenges do we need to write here? Just to collect the ideas, right? I asked you to, to write about three challenges. But here you can see that th that is a singular, right? The biggest challenge. So out of this, you need to think about one challenge. And uh, I would suggest you to choose the one that is closer to you, that you can talk more about. Uh, and to prove your point, of course. So in the article, you need to write about one biggest challenge and the way and your predictions if you are able uh, to deal with it. Uh, you, I mean uh, the all population, all the people, right? Also, reading the task is very, um, have uh, many interesting things. So uh, apart from these uh, main, uh, main uh, things, you also need to, to know, to notice some information, for example, that this is an article for young people, right? If it is for young people, uh, it's uh, the website for young people. Should the article be very formal, neutral, or informal? I would suggest to write in some neutral st uh, style, but you can use some expressions uh, and engage uh, people of your age, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is the website. This is not your private chat, right? So you don't need to, to sound too informal. But also um, formal writing is not for, for this type of article. What else? How many words do you need to write? This is important. You need to write from 140 to 190 words. This is a task. You try, try to uh, stick to these uh, frames, right? Appropriate style, we have just discussed it. And these, the first sentence shows us what style it is. Great. International website, again. So this is a website, lots of people could see it, not only from your country, but from different countries, right? All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your answers. I see uh, here we have really active students who are uh, communicating with me. So I invite all of you to write your ideas. This is interesting, this is the dialogue. And uh, if I see that you are with me, you are, on the same, we are on the same wavelength, it means that uh, we can move further, or maybe I can see that we need some more explanations. Thank you for your answer, questions. Phrasal verbs, right, you need to use them. Other contractions allowed. Uh, in this, uh, let's have a look at the example of the article and we'll see if they use the um, constructions or no. Right? Let's investigate, let's do some investigations. This is the preparation lesson, that's why we are going to look at the model. But before, uh, 
uh, these are mm, the introductions. You can see two introductions uh, to the article. Read them and decide which one is better and why, how the other can be improved. Uh, at least try to understand which one is better. Modern cities are full of traffic and pollution. Understandably, many people believe these problems will become worse in the future and will make life in the cities impossible. But what if the biggest challenge for cities is something else? Cities in the future will be worse than they are now because of this. City will experience many problems. These problems will make life very difficult for them and it will be hard to live in cities. Which introduction appeals to you? Some of you are writing that the first one is more successful, is better. Why? What made you think that? Yeah, we all, we all agree that uh, the first one. Yeah, and uh, I. The first one. Right. Uh, so I like it has more explanation. So uh, we see here some specific details, like full of traffic and pollution. Right. We are not talking about general things. We stick to the point that there are problems, but uh, like traffic solutions, uh, we um, speculate with it, we'll say that people uh, will think that these problems will become worse and impossible. And then uh, the, the most important thing that uh, make this uh, introduction Better, this is the last question. What is the biggest challenge for cities is something else? You see? So using this very simple question, we attract the uh, attention, right? And now we are all thinking, hmm, what the biggest challenge could be, right? So using these questions in the introduction part can give you a, a bonus and make your article interesting. If to forget about exam, why are we writing articles. We write them to entertain people, right? We want our uh, readers to read the article from the beginning to the end and maybe we want to influence their opinion, maybe we want to entertain them, maybe we want them to support us, right? Or to show something very important. That's why we need our, uh, the people to read the article from the beginning to the end. Using these uh, um, method, these questions will benefit and uh, you have more chances that people will read uh, your article. The same is for exam. If, if the exam task is an article, task is an article, it means that you need to to show that you are able to attract readers' attention. It has more explanation, it has a question and examples, that's right. It's not just, uh, what, uh, what's wrong with the second one? How can we correct it? Cities in the future will be worse than they are now because of this. City people will experience many problems. These people will make it very, these problems would make life very difficult for them and it will be hard to live in the cities. I can see here two long sentences without any uh, important information. Some problems, some people, life harder, probably yes, but uh, what exactly? Yeah, be specific, that is important. Maybe given examples would be a great idea. Maybe turning uh, the last question into uh, the last sentence into a question would be great for changing it. Yeah. For example, how our life could be even more difficult than we experience now. 
or something like that. At least we will attract the attention. But anyway, always think about these examples. If, uh, if you have any problem, try to <clears throat> to put it into small parts and to see to see what examples can you give. Because uh, it's interesting when we understand what we are reading about. And examples give us clear picture. We can visualize what we uh, read about. Which exact problems? Uh, so here I, I see the response from one of the students. In the second, we should write which exact problems will happen in the future. Right. So it's better not to start from this water, yeah, like some teachers say. Maybe personal experience, right? Personal experience always uh, works well. So um, let's look at the article. And uh, you need to match four paragraphs together with main ideas of this paragraph. So you can see paragraphs one, two, three, four, and main ideas A, B, C, D. And also you can see here the answer to your question if we are allowed to use contractions, short forms. I'm going to, to be quiet for a minute for you to concentrate, to read, and to do this matching activity. Okay, so I guess that you had time to at least to scroll uh, this article. Let's uh, match. So the first idea, traffic and pollution are huge problems in cities and many people think they will become worse, but they might be uh, might not be the biggest problems. This is the first one, right? This is the introduction. Some of you wrote to me that it's important to have these three main uh, parts of an article. Introduction, main part, and uh, uh, summing up, right? So the first one is introduction. The aim of introduction in, is to introduce your um, main idea and to engage the reader, right? To m make the reader uh, read your article, right? Solar and wind power could produce the electricity we need in cities. Which paragraph is that? The third one, right? Here we have the example. All city buildings could use energy from the sun and wind for electricity and heating, right? C, uh, we rely on fossil fuels for power, but they are running out. So this creates uncertain, uncertainty about what cities will be like in the future. This is the second paragraph, right? So here he states the problem about the biggest challenge. We can see it clearly. Um, we understand the author's point of view. We can support it. We cannot support it. But anyway, uh, we know it. It's quite clear. And the last one is uh, our conclusion. And in the conclusion, we had to write about his hopes, his beliefs, right? Maybe uh, what he asks people to do, right? So clean energy forms are the way forward for our cities and our planet. So 
this is the solution that authors uh, thinks is the best one. So let's have a look again at the answers A, C, B, and then D, right? Thank you very much for your active participation. Let's uh, move on. Uh, Has the author uh, covered both parts of the topic? The first one was the biggest challenge. The second one, will we be able to uh, solve it to, right? He has, right? Has he began and ended the article effectively? We have discussed at the beginning of the article. It was effective, it was specific, it was interesting, it, it used uh, a question. What about the end? I'm going to open the chat and to read your ideas. You write yes to me. Thank you. Right. He, uh, he writes, uh, doesn't want to, to finish this article, um, sadly, probably, right? He thinks that we, everything is in our hands and uh, we can make important changes. So we don't face this major problem later. And as you can see, everything that he writes about is about this main problem, right? Even the end of the article, again, goes to this problem. He doesn't talk about the future in general. He talks about us, about what we need to do. So this is really important. Always stick to, the, to your main idea. Then, Exam finishes, you can discuss different problems with your friends if you really are interested in this. But when you are writing, try not to write about different things. Choose one and write about it. All right, again, I'm going to read some of your comments. You're right, yes, it's, 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 it's uh, effective, right? The end and the beginning of the article is really effective, great. Now, we know his point of view, right? So this article is worth meaning, why not? So let's have a look at some things, how to keep your reader interested. Uh, this is the clo exam close up. I've been talking about it, but now you can see it with your own eyes. You can make your article more interesting if you provide descriptions and examples. All of you noted uh, those examples in the article. They were important. They help us understand what author is talking about and to visualize the picture. Not only do these support your opinion, but they make an article livelier, right? That's right. We uh, don't want to be it like um, the text from the dictionary, right? We want the article to be interesting. So any examples, everything, make it, um, more engaging. And make sure you involve your readers by asking questions. That is important. Uh, use this uh, if you want to engage your reader. Which phrases do we use to engage readers? Let's look at this sentence. In the future, green energy, such as solar and wind power, will be essential. Let's try to make, uh, to change this sentence into more, in a more engaging way. You can ask a question, you can uh, and do anything. Let's try and then we will see what suggestion the book has. Let's imagine that this is the beginning of, of an article. In the future, grid energy such as solar and wind power will be essential. So we want our readers to finish this article. How can we start it? What can we do it? How can we do it better? Right, I have some answers. We, we need to, yes, examples. Thank you. We can uh, end, uh, finish, right? We can add one more sentence, write in an example. For example, we can 
uh, install solar panels on the roofs, right? Or have you already had this solar panel on your roof? I have very interesting ideas. Uh, do you know? Have you ever heard of this? Yeah. Have you ever heard that green energy will be essential, right, in the future? For example, yeah, solar energy can save us, right? And uh, so, and you, so you just change it into this uh, into the question. Good. Alternative power, right? Mm -hmm. So here are the useful expressions that we can use. You can use direct questions like, have you ever wondered what would life be like if, what would life be like if we use wind power in Kyiv, for example, right? Or do you think green energy will be essential? Something like that. Can you imagine? Right, so you, 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 you can start using this expression, they are very important. And uh, I suggest um, all students to have this uh, bank of phrases that you can use no matter what article you are writing about, what article you are writing. That's why maybe you can take even a photo of this. So you can ask directly, also you can do it um, in a different way. You can use, uh, use some phrases like, I wonder what will, yeah, imagine what will be like, imagine what the life will be like, uh, imagine what our city will be like, I wonder what um, the city of the future will um, face, anything, right? So, it's also the question, but you put it in a, in a, a bit different, different way. Also, if we are talking about future, of course, we need to, um, to write some future phrases like one day, not too long from now, uh, in, the, in the not too distant future, in 50 years from now, in 50 years time. Pay attention that we use comma after these phrases, then because uh, this is a different word order, right? So you need to put comma and also um, this last phrase, 50 years time, so you need uh, to use a apostrophe, right? Good. Now, I suggest we have a bit of uh, training and let's practice these expressions. I would like uh, you to scan the code and um, uh, open, play a game with me. Uh, otherwise, I will do it or you can do it with me, I will do it on the screen, but I guess in one minute. So I would like, again, you to take your phone, to scan the code, and uh, to, write, uh, to play the game, to practice these phrases, because uh, practice, uh, you have just seen the phrases, right? Maybe you remember them, maybe you will remember them in 20 minutes, but what happens in, uh, tomorrow, for example, or in a week. Uh, you could forget that. So let's practice. And also you will, you can save it and uh, do this preparation before, uh, before the exam also. Are you ready? Have you, is anyone already there? I, I believe that all of you are, all of you are busy now scanning the code, but, I, I guess I will do this. I will do the same. So I'm just mm -hmm. So I've opened uh, this is an application and uh, let's try if you uh, need to To scan the code again, please write to me. I will open this slide but let's uh, do it. Here we have uh, three fields. Now it's just uh, just to check our memory, right? We have three categories, direct question, direct question, and talking about the future. In 50 years time, right, what is that? 
talking about future, right? Not too long from now, again, yeah, this is about future. I wonder what will, mm -hmm, thank you. I wonder what this is, what type of question it is. We, uh, there is no question mark, so <laughs> that is indirect question. In the not too distant future, I like this phrase, it's very interesting and uh, not so typical, right? In, in the future, everyone could say like that, but in not too distant future sounds a bit more sophisticated, a bit more interesting. And you show uh, to, um, to, to your teacher that you have some knowledge, you, you can use language in an interesting way. In 50 years from now, Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for answering. Great. Can you imagine, this is the, uh, the question, right? Have you ever wondered, do you think, again, this is the, just the question, right? Imagine what something will be like. This is indirect question. One day, you can start it. Uh, you can start your article like this. Yeah. One day, uh, we will wake up in a totally different city, for example, right? And the, uh, the author will be interested, hmm, how could it be if it is, uh, what happened, why? Is it a fairy tale or, or something? What would uh, life be like if, again, this is just the question, right? Okay, so I'm ready, let's check. It's very e e easy to use, so you really can do it on your own, just very quickly categorize those phrases, check yourself, maybe change something. You will see them, you will remember them much better. But that is not the only mm, practice that I prepared for you today. Let's have a bit different exercise. If you are with me, if uh, uh, I mean on the phone, uh, you can uh, scan now this code and we will And we and uh, practice. This is a bit diff a bit more difficult exercise. Now you need to type words in order to to finish the sentence or the phrase. Again, I will wait for maybe for 20 seconds for you to scan the code, and then we will do it together. All right, so I'm going to open it. So uh, the task, complete the gap, uh, the gaps with one word. It's important, right? We'll always read the tasks because they have 50% uh, like of what you need to write. Have you ever, what cars we are going to have in the future? Have you ever, uh, does anyone remember what phrase uh, was there? Wondered. All right. Thank you, Anna. Wondered. Let's try. Wondered. Okay. What life be like if we stop using petrol again? What can we use there? Again, I see some answers. Mm -hmm. Our. Great. Thank you. I. What our streets will look in 50 years' time? Do you remember the phrase? Or shall we look? Okay, I see some answers. I wonder again, yeah? But here is important to use the correct uh, form, right? Have you ever wondered? We need present perfect. And I wonder what our life will look like. Uh, by the way, pay attention that after this phrase, have you ever wondered? I wonder. We use uh, just the sentence structure, right? We don't change um, the words, the word order, right? Have you ever wondered? That is a question. After that, we just need to use the sentence. In not too future. Do you remember how we uh, call this future? 
in not too distant. Thank you, great. You are very quick to answer here today, but distant. Great. And the last one, not long from now. Again, what was one phrase? Mm -hmm. Not too long, not too long from now, online shops will be much more popular and reg than, than regular ones. Good, let's check. All right, what is here? Let's check. Uh, what are the phrases? What? would life be like, right? Why not uh, our? We can use our, but um, also we need would, because otherwise we don't have uh, this verb to make the sentence correct, right? Right. What would life be like if we stop using petrol? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, now we are correct. Well done, thank you very much. If you completed this task on your own, please uh, write to me. Uh, was it easy or was it difficult? Did you manage to do it from the first uh, attempt or you need it several times? All right, now I guess that um, let's have some more practice. Again, you need to use to go to this Mentimeter. If you have forget, uh, if you logged out, please come back to uh, to that site. Again, uh, you need this Mentimeter, but now we are going to have a bit different task. We have this statement: the increase in air travel is having a big impact on the environment. Try to remember at least one phrase from the previous task and to type to me the question, uh, the answer, anything, but try to make uh, this statement um, in order to interest your readers. So you just need... Thank you very much for your feedbacks. Again, uh, you just need to go to the site that is called menti.com. You need to enter the code and you need to write um, to me the way you can change your this sentence in order to attract the reader. I'm not going to close it, but just in case, maybe uh, to refresh our memory, let's have a, a look again at the useful expressions. Have you ever wondered, yeah, do you think, can you imagine, what would life be like if? I wonder what will, imagine what will be like in not too distant future, in 50 years from now. Choose one of these phrases, and um, type it to me. Yeah, right. Does it travel influence on the environment? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, if you if you are on that side, you can see that. Um, on your screens, you can uh, see the what other people are writing, and you can put your um, like there to support. Okay, try to use any phrase. Have you ever wondered how much, uh, what, how big 
the impact is, right? I, I have always wondered why environment is influenced by air, air traveling. Right, let's have a look. We have some more. Can you imagine which impact will increase in air travel have on the environment? Which impact? Can you imagine which impact which impact uh, traveling has on the environment right or will have which what impact right maybe or how, how, how big Good, let's have a look at others. Imagine what would happen to the world if we travel less. Wow. And then we can use uh, the next phrase, right? So you changed everything completely, but you, again, you stick to the point and uh, now it's becoming more interesting to it. Great job. Let's have a look at more. At some more, have you ever thought about the future and what if the future has come? Right. Uh, interesting question, right? And after this question, I suggest you to give a very clear example and uh, to, to write something really specific. What will be with oxygen? in the not too distant future. Wow, you remember the phrase, not too distant future. Mm -hmm. Great. What will be with the, mm -hmm. the oxygen in the not too distant future? Great. So three more questions. Do you think a travel influence on the environment? Yeah, this is a question for all of us too. Hmm. I've never thought about that. Maybe yes, really. Do car trips pollute air? <laughs> Why not, right? We can write about pollution, maybe comp compare uh, car traveling and air traveling, right? Because I, I guess that the impact is different. Do you think that the increase in air travel is having a big impact on the environment? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you very much. Really great. I like it very much. I like you being active, first of all. I like you that you try, you practice. And I really hope that um, your task, um, you'll remember some of the phrases and you will uh, use uh, them, use this knowledge. Uh, then you're not too distant future. <laughs> Good. Now let's look. At, uh, let's look again at the task. We're not going to write the whole article. Of course, you can do it. And if I receive some response from you, I will definitely read them. I will leave my comments on them. It would be really uh, interesting for me to read what uh, modern students uh, think about the future, about the future problems. But um, it's not compulsory. What I'm asking you to do uh, now is to think and to write to me in uh, the chat box at least the first sentence, how you will start the article, or maybe even the name of the article. Do you think the sun and wind can help us? Nice. How we lost friends because of technology? Interesting.
So th th they were some ideas from our the most uh, active students today. So you all get this idea and um, I, I, I think it's not new how to start an article with a question. Great. And now I believe that you have um, some more phrases how to make these questions sound a bit more interesting. Have you ever wondered why? Yeah, so when you refer to a reader like that, we ask them to start thinking about, right, about some things. All right, great. Anyway, um, nowadays we are face to face with lots of environmental problems. Mm -hmm. Good. And after that, we can. Um, have the second sentence uh, talking about something really uh, interesting in you, right? The, na uh, the name of the article is Suggest Challenges of the Future. Yeah, that's right. Why not? Uh, and uh, this is what we are worried about, right? Especially these days with all these uh, viruses and so on and so forth. Great, thank you very much for being active, for uh, answering me. You can still leave comments, I will read them. But I, will, I would like to sum up. So when you, are, uh, when you are writing an article, first of all, the first task for you is to read the task carefully. Don't start writing without reading, without understanding how many parts you need to write, what questions you have, what is your audience. So the task has a, will give you the approximate plan, right? By the way, there was an answer, a question about using short forms. Did you notice short forms in that article? I did, and I think that is uh, all right because it's not official uh, writing. Uh, this is uh, in a neutral style. That's why it's possible to use contraction short forms. Use descriptions and examples. I don't write about general things to generally. Try to be specific. These examples will, people, these examples are something that people will remember, right? Involve your readers by asking questions. We practice it a lot today. And of course, check your writing. Look carefully. Maybe you wrote different letter. Maybe you need to change the word order. Maybe you need another tense. So, Try to have these several minutes when you finish writing in order to look through it and maybe do some final corrections. Thank you very much. Uh, today we did really, really great preparation um, about writing, how to write an article. Lots of you were really active and I guess that maybe if even if not everyone participates uh, here, but anyway, you were thinking about it, you are thinking about future, how to make it better. I believe that you, you remember some of the phrases and will use them. So really great job today, both and students and teachers. Thank you for your uh, being active, for your support, for your feedbacks. That is really great. If you are students, you're free now. And for teachers, I have some announcement about our future events. First of all, all the tasks were taken from this book, Close Up, B2 level. Uh, that, is, that is a book that is recommended uh, from the 5th up to the 11th grade. It has the permission from Ministry of Education. It uh, has uh, very interesting topics, interesting texts, and uh, together with that, it prepares students for exams. Also, students have video lessons. They have one video for each unit. And all videos, all audios, all additional activities are online and very easy to use and to download, both for students and for teachers. It gives us lots of questions, lots of interesting information, and we, have, we can have interesting discussions with our students. I noticed today from our students' answers that um, young people today um, really think about future, about problems, and they give very interesting ideas and it, they have something to tell us. So the book gives us questions in order to help us to make this dialogue, to uh, show to our learners that they are grown up, 
that we want to uh, discuss with them different interesting problems, not just descriptions of their flat or of the city, but to look deeper into any topic. Also, in order to cover the Ukrainian program, we have a special a book that goes free together with student book, uh, Close Up for Ukraine. Uh, it's necessary for, for us to cover the school program. Thank you very much for your feedback. Uh, and uh, some more information. Tomorrow, we are going to have the webinar. The speaker, the presenter again is me, Diana Galavan. And we are going to talk about integrated learning. Not the specific uh, separate subject, but uh, how to make learning English more integrated, more interested, interesting for our students and more useful for our students uh, to show them how to use language not just to speak in, within the classroom but to learn about the world to study new things um, to go abroad and to have new friends say the date on june 11th we are going to have ngl summer conference it will be online all the information will be announced on Monday, so please wait, uh, wait for it. We are going to announce it on our Facebook page, on our site. Anyway, just several days and we, you will find out everything and uh, the, it will be really inspiring confer conference for us to finish this school year and to plan our next year. Also, uh, for, for those who like books, as, uh, the same as me, and uh, National Geographic Learning now has these uh, sales. You can uh, find the um, good discounts on different books uh, that uh, can help you prepare students for exam or could be used as just um, the textbook in your classroom, maybe for your private lesson. You can scan the codes and to look at all offers on site or you will get the links um, in the email after the webinar thank you uh, again i'm from time to time i open in our chat box i read your <laughs> feedback thank you very much so more uh, national geographic learning don't forget about their official site eltngel.com where you can uh, find lots of support for teachers lots of articles or lots of webinars, upcoming webinars, recorded webinars, presentation and ready-made lessons to teach students about the uh, COVID-19. So really great site uh, as for me. And uh, I would like also to mention our training center. Now it's summer. It's uh, time for us teachers to work on uh, our professional development to get ready for our next to have some rest probably and to get ready for our next year i personally think that uh, professional development should uh, it, it's, it's a compulsory part right well there is also always something new for us and something to study to to take into our practice that's why uh, pay attention, check uh, the site. Uh, I believe that you will find a webinar, a program, summer school you know, that will uh, suit your interests and your, what you expect from your professional development. And uh, on the, uh, the 2nd of June, there is a webinar for t uh, teachers who try to develop, who, who uh, visit lots of webinars, seminars, but get the information so you will see how to become this um, effective learner. And when you uh, finish the webinar you will get the feedback form or you will get it in your email. I would be really happy <laughs> will be really happy to read your feedbacks, uh, your comments, your suggestions if you don't like anything maybe something didn't work or anything leave it there uh, I, I always read all the feedbacks and um, they've helped me to 
prepare for next events and to choose the topics that uh, are the best for for you. Uh, anyway, in several days, uh, maybe next week, uh, I read all the feedbacks and um, I send this presentation in PDF format to you so you can use it in order to have a lesson with your students. So th this is like gift for your feedback, which I appreciate a lot. My contact details, uh, if you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, you are interested in something or you would like to know more about professional development or about National Geographic Learning Series, feel free to contact me any way that is um, convenient to you. Also check our sites. We uh, save the, all information about the textbooks and some interesting articles, webinars, the recordings, everything can be found there. And of course, don't forget about our Facebook page. We try to keep you informed and to make, to, to give you some interesting ideas. Thank you very much. I've, I'm really happy to spend this time with you today. All of you did a really great job. And um, so, I hope to see you tomorrow at the webinar. And um, anyway, I wish you to have a really great productive summer when you can have rest, to get inspired and to be ready for future winnings. So thank you again and goodbye.